Hello again YouTube and I'm back with a short update video on my solar backup system. The system has been running fine for just over four years and in those four years I've learned a few things. Um, one thing that I've learned is that the batteries if they are only used for a you know just for backup purposes and they're not used every day they will last four years at least four years I mean they're fine and also if you if you're going to get an inverter for a backup system I would recommend getting an inverter charger because I found that this thing will back will restore batteries or, or recharge batteries really quickly uh, in the event of an extended power outage once the power comes back on this this inverter charge this magnuson will charge those batteries up in no time flat so in essence you don't need like I have four solar panels and for just typical backup purposes, you don't need four solar panels. You can get you can get away with just one solar panel, uh, just to just top off your battery. So you don't need four. Uh, but since I do have four, um, I'm uh, working on ways now to uh, put power back into my home. Uh, so right now, these batteries are over four years old. They're they're doing fine. They're doing fine, and they're not the same as I got five batteries of one type and I have seven batteries of another type and some folks have said well you shouldn't mix and match and so forth but uh, I found that it's no problem um, I've also this you included um, you, know, you uh, for you folks that have been following me you know that I use this this GTI controller that I bought from Enmod over at Tech Luck and this GTI controller allows me to take the excess power from my battery bank um, for my batteries the uh, after they are fully charged and take that excess power and uh, send it to this particular grid tie inverter that is connected to my home through a you know, wall outlet and it will pump in about 200 watts so what happens is when this reaches 22.6 as it is now right now it's turned off and once it holds for a little bit um, it, it had bolted it once the, while the voltage level holds steady at some point, this this uh, grid tie inverter will come on, just like it does now. It'll come on, and this light will start blink blinking fast, to let you know that now it's pumping power into the house. And one thing that I've done also, I've included this switch, and I have uh, this switch connected to um, a one of my solar panel uh, solar panel arrays, and so. If it's pointing on, on this side, it says I want the power to come from the solar panels to uh, I want the, the power to, from the solar panels to go to the batteries. And if it, if I switch it here, I want the power from the solar panels to go to this particular uh, grid tie inverter here. This is a 500 watt grid tie inverter. It's a super grid tie inverter that I've had for a while, and I've been decided to put it back into the system. So it's connected right now directly to the panels. My other panels are connected uh, to, you know, sending power to my battery bank, and then once my battery bank gets full, then it'll send power to uh, uh, put power back into the house. Um, as a backup solution, this thing it has worked great, and um, and so, but now after four years, I'm like, well, can I get a little bit more out of it? So now I'm focused on getting power back to the house. You can't see this watt meter here, so I'm gonna kind of shine the light on it just a little bit. Just to kind of you can see, and right now um, you can tell that what we got going on is it's like 424 watts, right? You know, maybe four and a half, uh, 420, 430. It'll kind of fluctuate around there, and that's what's getting pumped into my house uh, while these two are working in tandem together. So right now, um, I, in, in essence, I believe I can say that I have my cake and I can eat it too. I have a backup system. Um, and I have a way of sending power directly to my to my home. Um, so right now it's a high, it's truly a hybrid system. is working is working fine. Uh, this particular grid timer, I have a fan on the back to keep it cool, and I have this RV fan that I modified to uh, keep this one cool. So essentially, this RV fan is being supplied power. Uh, just through this DC adapter, I just cut the end off as opposed to having a 12 volt uh, adapter plug in like uh, you see in a cigarette lighter plug in. I just put a, this is a DC adapter and I just put that on there. And so right now that particular fan is being supplied power from this grid timer. It's about 10 watts and that's nothing. So this grid timer actually 
uh, supplies power to this fan to keep it to keep it cool. And as you can see right now, it's my battery bank is at 25.9 uh, volts, and the grid tie inverter is off. And so what happens is once this reaches 20, 26.2, uh, which it is slowly climbing, um, it'll come back on. And while that's on, while this, while my batteries are being charged, uh, this grid tie inverter is still pumping about 200 watts into the grid. As a matter of fact, yeah, around two, about 200 watts, and uh, that's fine. That's that's fine. So this at 26.1, it'll go up again to 26.2. And then the process will start again. And so the, the system, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with it. It's, it's working fine. It's after four years, the house is still standing. <laughs> okay, so for you folks that are concerned about, oh, you know, it's going to, you know, do-it-yourself do means it's gonna, your house is going to burn down and stuff like that. That's not true. But anyway, this is just an update, YouTube. Take care.